it's always difficult to summarize someone's ex experiences and pain um, in a small or a short caption. And, and I think that's, that's the beauty of photography. My name is Ala Khair. Um, I'm a Sudanese photographer, originally from Darfur. Sudan has always been my photography playground, and I would say most of my photo projects and narratives are uh, related directly to Sudan. It felt like a normal day, and then you start hearing uh, machine gun fires uh, somewhere in the center of the city. And just like everyone else, I thought that this will take just a few hours and things will go back to normal. Um, unfortunately, uh, it took days, weeks, months, and now we are talking and it's uh, a year of conflict in Sudan. The decision came to leave uh, that area in downtown Khartoum after um, there was no electricity for a long time, uh, no running water, and uh, no shops open nearby. So, you know, we started to run out of, you know, basic stuff, basic needs. The snipers started to uh, appear in the area, so it became dangerous even to stay. I had the chance to to be a war photographer. From my window, I could see fighter jets flying nearby. I could see, at night, you'll see the, you know, the, the, the bullets roaring in the sky. You can see the lights, just like, you know, shooting stars. Um, but there was actually a lot going on in mind. Sudan is one of the places that is not camera friendly. I cannot risk uh, being hurt. Uh, there's a lot uh, to think about when you're a father. My interest in photography is more humanistic. Uh, it's more about the people. I prefer to, to shoot and to film and to talk to people uh, in, in a better moment than, than the action of war itself. I always find that uh, women go through much more pain than men. And um, subconsciously, uh, most of the images I'm, I'm attached to are actually stories of women. I met uh, twins from Darfur, two young, beautiful girls, Suhaila and Suha. They are 12 years old and they traveled almost 2,400 kilometers from Darfur uh, all the way to Port Sudan uh, with their mother and their, and their younger brother. Uh, the trip was difficult for them, although Suha and Suhaila are just 12 years old, but their ability to just, you know, be strong and, and hide all that pain so that their mother does not feel uh, more worried is just amazing. And it made me respect them a lot because uh, their way of thinking and the way of, uh, the way they talk about their journey is just unbelievable for someone who is just 12 years old or 13 years old. There are so many stories that stuck to my mind, but one I cannot forget is actually Hannah Wilson. Hannah fled the war in South Sudan in 2012 uh, to find a safer space to live uh, in Khartoum, uh, where she lived mostly in uh, abandoned homes. She, she was squatting from a home to another. Uh, and again, that she had to go through a second form of displacement from Khartoum to go back to the first camp that she went through at, at the first place is just sad. Um, and what's actually uh, more difficult to hear was Hannah lost both of her children in, in a span of less than a week, I think, as far as I remember. And she was actually in an extreme form of trauma, but she did not know that she was actually in trauma. But you can see it on her face. You can. You can hear that in her voice. It's always challenging to take uh, images of people in need um, because we always end, end um, asking very personal questions, um, almost invading personal spaces. Um, but at the same time, I think the power of what we do is it allows uh, their story to be to be heard, and that somehow you know help will find their way to them.
It's very difficult to imagine how it feels to be uh, in a war zone or to experience war around you. And, and I think to endure that for a year, uh, it's, it's really crazy. And I'm not talking about a small population of people who are trapped somewhere. I'm talking about uh, eight, more than eight million Sudanese had to leave their homes. The majority are st still inside Sudan. Children are outside schools, no access to medical services, no access to basic human needs. And to endure that for a year, if there is no serious movement by, uh, by the world, the conflict in Sudan could actually become even worse. I hope my photography helps in getting people to talk about uh, not the conflict, but the people who are affected by the conflict. Thank you.